Hi, I'm David, David. Nice to meet you. First, I'd like to thank uh, the organizer, Ilya and Miri, for giving me this opportunity to give the talk today. Um, so maybe I will start just with a few words about myself. I spent most of my career in oncology and cancer therapeutics um, as executive. I, um, in the last few years, I work with my partner, co-founder and friend, Professor James Wesh uh, from uh, MD Anderson. And basically what I'm going to show you today comes from his lab. So my uh, partner is uh, uh, what we call physician scientist at MD Anderson. He treats uh, lung cancer patient. He's a radiotherapist. And we all know that there is a very interesting intersection between cancer and longevity. We have heard several talks today about the roles of uh, senescence, mitochondria, and everyone, everything in cancer. Um, as a lung physician radiotherapist, uh, he looks for treating uh, lung cancer patients which unfortunately experience uh, short-term survival because of the, they develop resistance very quick. But the idea behind our effort to generate a new company, a new startup, and bring some therapeutics is based on our idea that um, understanding in the past, understanding resistance for cancer, uh, we could develop some therapeutic. We co-founded together Boko Therapeutics, which is uh, immuno-oncology. And now we're looking to uh, co-found a new uh, longevity company called Emit. The idea of Emit is of course, to develop therapeutics that can extend the health spans and the thesis behind our company is based on understanding uh, cancer resistance from X-ray. So as we all know, uh, radiotherapy comes with a snag. In fact, that the fact that we use radiotherapy to treat cancer patients, we also accelerate their aging. And we have heard several talks today and yesterday that uh, X-ray can generate damage uh, into uh, the cancer cell. I mean, the idea is to kill the cell, but at the same time, they also can damage healthy cells. And they can damage this by generating senescence. We just heard today from Valerie, uh, the roles of senescence, and what we call short-term uh, role in senescence in pre-malignant, but there is also a very interesting role in uh, cancer. And we believe that understanding uh, uh, how this um, how can cancer can protect themselves from radiation utilizing senescence can generate some therapeutics. So think about that radiation, even low radiation does even like 0.5 can generate what we call age related disease or increase the risk of age related disease. This is just an example of CVD. And even if we're looking at very low uh, exposure like 0.5 gray, that's already enough to bump the increase uh, the risk factor for several diseases for cancer patient. Um, we have shown that once we shine X-ray on cancer cell, we can actually and gradually increase the dose. We can see that we generate more and more senescent cell, and that's as uh, we also heard today uh, from Valerie. But as I said, cancer cell can utilize this to protect themselves from X-ray, and they do that by a very interesting mechanism. We demonstrated that by looking at um, shining, of course, radiating X-ray on melanoma cell. We demonstrate that if we use senolytics that we heard today that can we, and we had yesterday, and we know that very well, that can remove senescence, we can dramatically increase the survival uh, of that. So that means that the therapeutics, which is the X-ray giving uh, to kill the cancer has a much profound, uh, sorry, much profound uh, uh, approach compared to uh, if you don't give uh, senolytics. And that means that you need to remove the senescent cell in a later stage. You can see here that if we actually remove them earlier, it won't help. The reason we need to remove them later is because we need to get them to be generated. So it takes time to generate the senescent cells by X-ray, but once you remove them, you can dramatically impact. And that was the basis for us to develop a platform that we can actually develop um, based on that platform, look for 
long non-coding RNA and mRNA and look for some therapeutics that are related to aging and longevity. Um, one example um, of this is to use antisense drug because we believe that the antisense platform is a very versatile and can help us uh, bring this further into the clinic. So the idea is, of course, as we heard today from several talks, to develop uh, uh, therapeutics that can target several all marks at once, not just one all mark, but several. Number two is to base this on uh, RNA uh, medicine due to the effect of COVID. So we know that RNA is a very versatile tool, particularly antisense drug that we can use either to deplete the protein or we can use in RNA splicing. That's another alternative that has been pursued for several years in cancer therapeutics. And now we want to take it also to longevity. And the fact that it's a platform, that means that we can generate several different assets for several uh, age-related disease that we all heard are based on that. Um, and, and by the way, uh, antisense are getting more and more traction recently. There are several drugs approved by FDA already. And the good news about them is that they are by themselves, they're a platform. That means that you can risk, they risk the asset when you bring it to human and when you translate it from animal model into a human translation. And that's give us uh, a much shorter time to go from preclinical model all the way to phase one. And of course, there's, you know, several modalities those days. There is uh, antibodies, small molecules, there's cell therapy and so on. And each one has its own. Uh, this. We found out that the first target that we identified is related to CERT. And we heard today a lot about, uh, from Chaim, about CERT-6. And we found out that is also related to CERT-1. So those genes are very important in age-related disease. There's already extensive study in the literature about the rule. Um, and in several age-related disease. And we believe that we can focus on a few of those using uh, the first target that we have identified with this, sorry. Um, and in order to show that uh, we did, um, um, I'm, not, I'm not going to show you in vitro data, just jump directly to the in vivo data, the animal model. And the drug that we have identified, again, it's an antisense drug. So we actually did a very simple study giving the drug to three groups of uh, mice, old, uh, which are what we call 20 months, young, like uh, three months, and all mice treated with the drug for one month, uh, three times a week. And what we can see here, it's a, something fascinating. We can actually uh, bump and increase several of the old marks uh, in the old mouse compared to the old mouse with no drugs. So we can look at epigenetics, sorry, uh, slide just moved by itself, uh, mitochondria, uh, telomerase, senescence, and of course, DNA repair. And if you want, I think this slide is so beautiful because in some extent, it summarized several of the talk given today. So we heard a lot uh, from Chaim about the role of CERT-6 and CERT-1 and, and other, and the family of cert gene. And uh, Natalie taught us about mitochondria and how important mitochondria is this in, in longevity and in, in aging. And yesterday we heard a lot about telomerase. And senescence, Valerie explained to us how senescence are very important, not in the short term, but also in the long term. So if we can do something about senescence, that will be great. And of course, uh, DNA repair, because Professor Schumacher just showed us as how important if we have a way that we can increase the capacity of DNA repair. But now imagine that you have one drug, one drug that can really uh, ramp all of these very, very, in a very elegant and very nice way. So where we want to take this, because there are so several age-related disease that we can actually thought we decided after uh, some discussion with several key opinion leader to focus primarily on um, fibrosis. And Chaim already uh, showed us that fibrosis is, um, can be affected by CERT6 uh, gene, but macrophage also play a very important role in fibrosis and CERT1 is very important here. And we thought, oh, let's just can combine this together with one drug that can actually modulate both. So we would like to focus basically primarily now as a proof of concept of this approach on uh, lung fibrosis. 
Now, lung fibrosis, as you all know, has been studied extensively uh, for many years, and there is so many drugs that failed, and there's maybe two drugs approved by FDA, but they're very bad because they have a lot of side effects and the patients suffer. So one of the key things we learned from discussion this with key opinion leader is that you really need to generate a good preclinical data, a preclinical model. So we don't want to use animal model, which, you know, maybe thousands of drugs show that you can treat fibrosis, lung fibrosis on, on mice, but then it never, it failed to translate into the human. So we thought the best approach maybe will be um, to use this on, sorry, one slide. To, to use this on what we call uh, uh, precision cut lung slice, because this really imitate more the pathophysiology of the human. And organoids, which are coming more and more versatile tool because they're basically humanized, they can capture more of the pathophysiology rather than just a, a glomerulomycin animal model of the drug. So that is that's one of our approach. So the idea is to bring this to clinical POC. And of course, once we show this clinical POC, we will move forward to liver fibrosis, renal fibrosis, and of course, other type of disease. So the idea is to get this done um, as a first proof of concept, pre uh, proof of concept first preclinical and then clinical, and then focus on several age-related disease. So that's the goal of uh, the company, and thank you very much. Hi, um, I guess because I sit here, I get the mic first. Um, thank you for the talk, it was really interesting. Um, I'd be super interested in hearing about more details, but I guess that's uh, proprietary secret stuff. Um, it, in terms of uh, lifespan extension in the MILES trials that you did, you um, maybe I missed it, but could you elaborate on, uh, you, you talked about the hallmarks of aging, but what was the actual numbers in terms of uh, extension or was it health span extension? Uh, thank you. Okay, that's a great question. So um, we, we, we didn't look, uh, due to some ethics issue with the protocol, we didn't look for really, because then you have to keep them mouse for a very long time. And the idea was first, just as a proof of concept to see that we can really get the biomarkers of all marks change modulated by the drug. And then now, of course, the next study is planned is to look for life extension. But I have to say something about that because several companies showed and, and demonstrate life extension, you know, of the mice. We just heard today even like by 25 to 40%. I don't think this should be really like now the, because we all know that it doesn't really translate immediately to the human. So I believe more in the idea that if you have a focus on some specific age-related disease and you can prevent them, it's more important, at least for now. Please. No, the company is based in Houston. Yeah. So, maybe, maybe it's it's more a discussion, but I I, I uh, almost totally disagree with this idea that we should to to see if uh, things are extending human longevity. We don't even look if it is extending mice longevity. You know, I I don't understand that. Uh, you 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 have old uh, mice and you don't let uh, live longer to see if it is working or not. And uh, don't forget that there is no mice in the world uh, that it's older than four years at the moment. So it's so, it, it, I would say it would be so easy to test to see if there are results in mice. I don't understand why why so many people are not doing that? It's very interesting uh, speech. They are very interesting speech. But once again, uh, yeah, of course we don't know. We don't know uh, mice. Mice, of course, mice are not humans. 
but it's pretty sure that if it is not working on mice, it will also not be working on humans, and you don't know if it is working on mice at the moment. You're absolutely right, but I think it's, it's, we will look into life extension in mice. I just say that the, the main focus for us right now is to look that if that drugs can prevent some age-related disease, because the, the dogma is that if you can prevent and postpone age-related disease, of course, you can, will get uh, a life extension. I mean, that's... Sorry, but not, of course. When, when okay. I, 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 I absolutely agree. I mean, this is our, our goal for the, for the animal, next animal study, but the goal now was at least to show that, you know, we can ramp the biomarkers and we can take this further to age-related disease.